funny thing happened last night. Very funny thing happened last night. I come on the game. I get my ninth stamp or whatever for just logging into the game. I get the free standard pack or whatever it is. I go on Diamond Dynasty, open the pack. Miguel Cabrera, out of nowhere. He, I couldn't believe what I was seeing in front of my face. Pulled Miguel Cabrera out of a standard pack and I almost shit my pants. Didn't post it because I don't I don't post pack openings and any of that stuff because I am the bad luck Brian over here at the pack openings. I used to open packs all the time when I played Madden and holy shit. I don't even know how many coins and all that shit I wasted on that game from buying packs. But that was ridiculous, man. I am the the worst luck son of a bitch at opening packs, so I never do that shit. But what do you know? Free pack I get. I get Miguel Cabrera. Checked how much he was going for in the market. It was around 40000 And I was just thinking whether or not I should sell him and try and pick somebody else up. But, yeah, 40000 I couldn't really sell him and get somebody that I really wanted to get at the moment, at least. So I put him in the lineup just to see if he can do some damage in the lineup. Had him bat number 5, I'm pretty sure, in this game. And, yeah, I was just saying for forever, pretty much, that I need a first baseman. So, fuck. MLB San Diego Studios hooked me up big time by letting me get Miggy. So now he is on the team. And it's funny because his flashback card has the best hitting stats I've ever seen in my life. But his fielding is only 50, I'm pretty sure. But I think his flashback, his primary position is third base. But his, his just his live series card is first base. But his fielding for his live series card is 77. So, I don't know, man. The fielding is pretty decent. This is definitely, I think this might be the first baseman I've got. The only first baseman I've gotten where the fielding was above like a 70. So, that is going to come in handy. First at bat for Miggy. He is driving one to the gap, but I am not testing Ichiro's arm right there. Miggy with the, what, 22 speed? No chance in hell. That probably would have been a close play, but it was right on the money. So, I don't know. Maybe I probably would have been thrown out right there. So, Miggy gets off to a good start. In his first at bat, driving one to right center and getting the single. But I wasn't able to capitalize from Miggy getting the leadoff base hit as I just go down making no noise again. I got Corey Kluber on the hill. And I don't think he's pitched for me in the past couple games, but he is going up. I think he's like a 90 overall at the moment. So maybe Kluber can continue to make his way up because I think when the game first came out, he was only like an 86, 87. And I do a pretty decent job when Kluber is on the hill. And I'm still looking for that fifth starter I've been saying before. And I don't know, man, because I was saying it in the last video, Aaron Sanchez. I just have a feeling he's going to go up, so I want to keep that guy on the team. But I'm still looking for another fifth guy, 100%. Carl Crawford, the best leadoff hitter in the game, goes deep. So now we increase the lead to 2-0. Ellsbury is following that up with a base hit of his own. And then Yogi Berra at it once again, getting another base hit up the gut. But fuck, man, what am I even thinking? Testing Ichiro. The, the time I try and test Ichiro was probably the worst time. I don't even know why. Ellsbury actually almost made it in there. That was probably why I sent him to third bases because he has decent speed. But Ichiro, again, with the cannon right on the money, is able to get it in there. So now bottom of the third, first two guys are going down. Miggy is getting the last out of this inning. And he is leading it off in the top of the fourth, trying to get a rally going. Miguel Cabrera is ready here as we begin the top of the fourth. And they jumped out to that early lead, so now it's all about just adding on. Hit high and deep to straightaway right field. Cruz going back. Gone! Al Ripken will stand in for the second time now as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing in one. Hammers it to deep right field. Cruz looks up. A leap at the wall, but he can't bring this one back. It's a home run. Miggy is doing a little opposite field right there. Sending one to the upper deck. And then two batters later, Cal Ripken is sending one deep himself to the opposite field. And now we take the 4 to nothing lead. So the way things were going early in this game, it was looking pretty good. Maybe all I needed. But do not speak too soon. With two down, 
Nelson Cruz is up at the plate, and he is just getting a single by Donaldson right there down the third baseline. Then the next guy is his Diamond Dynasty player. I'm pretty sure his Diamond Dynasty player was pretty sick. And then he is also driving one left field. That could have been maybe... I could have possibly dove, with, dove right there with Crawford, but I didn't want to risk it. That could have been deadly if I did dive with him and missed it. And after I walked the next guy, the bases were loaded. And that could have been a tie ball game with one swing of the bat. But luckily, I'm able to get out of that in an unscathed. No damage being done. Not even one run on the board. That guy was probably pissed off. And yeah, with Miggy Man, I was saying I might try it. I was thinking about selling him. Because I was saying I wanted to pick up another possible first baseman in Mark Teixeira. So maybe, I don't know, like, geez, I don't, maybe. Who knows what will happen. But it maybe if I can sell Miguel Cabrera at some point and then have enough stubs to get that Mark Teixeira, I may try and pick him up. But Miggy got off to a good start in this game, so it was... A tough decision to let him go. I mean, I, did, I didn't really want to sell him right when I got him. I was just possibly thinking maybe I could sell him and pick a, another first baseman up. Like that Mark Teixeira. Since that Teixeira has crazy fielding like 95 or something like that. So no, nothing's going to get by him at first base. Plus he has good hitting stats. And he has dropped a significant amount. He's going for less than 100,000 at the moment I'm pretty sure. Miggy in his third at bat of this game with one down in the sixth he is just fouling one off inside right there trying to go deep swinging for the fences but the next pitch is coming down in the strike zone and he is driving one up the gut for his third base hit of the game so I'm sitting here talking about possibly selling Miggy and he is coming up with his third base hit of this game so Miggy doesn't want to be off the squad Miggy is coming to perform he's showing up in the debut for the team and I'm still looking for a second baseman too, but I don't think I'm going to sell Miggy and pick up a second baseman because then I'll be out of a first baseman again. The only reason I'll sell Miggy is so I can pick up another first baseman. And Robinson Cano has dropped more than I would have ever thought. The guy is going for like 80-something thousand stubs. I mean, I don't even personally, I don't even think he's that much better than his standard card. But man, 97 overall Cano was going for... Well, obviously he was going for around 300,000, 200,000 when he first came out. But he has dropped so much. He is lower than that 97 Dustin Pedroia. That Dustin Pedroia is actually pretty sick. And I was thinking about picking him up. But he hasn't dropped at all, man. He's been staying at the same price forever, it seems. He's still going for that usual 115, 120-something thousand stubs. So I'm not going to say that's a long shot. That Dustin Pedroia is probably the number one second baseman I want to pick up at the moment. Altuve maybe too because I've been thinking about it for a while. Maybe I should fill out the Astros set and then I'll also get that 95 Nolan Ryan so I'll be able to fill out the starting rotation because I need, that, I need another fifth starter like I've been saying. So maybe I might even do that at some point. Not sure. I don't know. Actually, maybe I'll probably do that next. The next time I get some stubs to spend, I'll probably fill out the Astro set. And then I'll get Altuve, second baseman, starting second baseman on the team. And then Hanley can finally get out of second base because 62 field and you don't want somebody like that at second base. And the bad arm as well. So possibly I will be uh, getting or filling out the Astro set once I get some more stubs. And then I'll have Altuve and then that Nola Ryan because every single Nola Ryan card in the game seems to be pretty nasty. And that one on the Astros is pretty nasty as well. I'm not sure if it's like, I'm not, somebody said that, uh, th somebody said before that that was the worst Nolan Ryan in the game, pretty sure, because he has one when he's on the Angels, like a 97, and he has one on the Rangers. I think that's a 96. And the Nola Ryan when he's on the Astros is 95. But all of them are pretty sick if you ask me, so I'm possibly going to do that next time I get some stubs. Insert Dellen Batantis because Kluber was kind of struggling after getting up that after giving up that leadoff base hit. I was taking him out 100%. So now we're going into the top of the ninth. I got the four to nothing lead. He's putting Hunter Strickland in the game. Miggy is swinging at an ugly one, but then the next pitch. Oh, and he gets a hold of this one as it's in the air to deep left. Does he have another one? He does. It's another home run. Miggy does not want to be off the squad. Miggy wants to stay in the lineup. 
And Jesus, after going four for four in the debut with two dingers, how can I even think about selling this guy now? I don't even know if I'm going to get rid of this guy now after this amazing performance in the debut. Bottom of the ninth, I'm getting the first two guys on only two pitches. So now this guy is down to his last strike and out of this game, getting him on the K. Jesus, I wonder who is going to get player of the game. And guys, I think you might agree, there's little doubt that the star of this afternoon's contest was this man, Miguel Cabrera. Don't put that card in your bicycle spokes. He's our top player of the game. Yeah, I think in the end, this really could have been anybody's award. But what the heck, let's go ahead and give it to this guy. He's as deserving as anybody.